and tsb.ie. Mial Martin not available to join us on the programme today. He seems to be concentrating on the electorate on Wednesday. The 70 other members of the Fianna Fáil Parliamentary Party who could help him become its leader. But is he the right man to be leader? In yesterday's Sunday Independent, Senator Owen Harris argued strongly that he's not the right man for Fianna Fáil, that Brian Lenehan is instead. And Owen Harris joins us now. Good evening to you, Owen. Um, uh, firstly, just why do you not think Mihal Martin's up to the job? Well... What we because it's been rushed. I mean, first of all, I can't understand the media agenda. I mean, from a practical point of view, the public, the bore bore stuff of the of the Greens walking in. No, I mean that's all very well. But I mean, the leadership of Fianna Fáil is critical. I mean, five or six weeks from now, and the Kenny will be sitting there, Pat Rabbit, um, Brian Hayes, and what Fianna Fáil and the country will want, and not just Fianna Fáil, but the country will want to see a really tough leader of Fianna Fáil giving the same grilling to that government as you're, you, we've been giving to Brian Cowan for the last two and a half years. And you have to ask yourself what kind of leader will Fianna Fáil have? And the leadership contest is not being looked at properly. It's far too rushed and it's been far too biased in it from a media point of view towards Michael Martin, Michael Martin. Uh, the Irish Independent is almost running him as their candidate uh, and uh, RT has not uh, ever put the two of them side by side, the two front runners, that's Brian uh, Lennon and Michael Martin because I believe if they did it would become very, very clear who should be leading Fianna Fáil. Uh, but what happened, I mean both the, both the men have share a common personal courage. I mean <clears throat> Michael Martin is faced up a terrible family tragedy. Lennon has faced up to his cancer, so they don't lack for personal courage. But if you were a management company, or a, uh, if you were a, the kind of interviewers that you see on The Apprentice, and you sat down and you reviewed their curriculum vitae, there is just no comparison. In terms of experience, Lennon has been the cold face for two and a half years. He didn't make the IMF crisis. He inherited that. Okay, you can say he inherited from Bertie Hearn and Brian Cohen, but he coped with it, and he coped with it rightly or wrongly, he coped with it with courage and commitment and he actually understands the brief whereas Michal Martin spent all that time he was over, presiding over FOSS, he set up FOSS, then he was in enterprise and employment, he never noticed the FOSS budgets were bloated, his biggest kind of boast is the smoking ban which is kind of the soft issue we associate with the Greens throwing out the green tea and the vegetarianism and we get the aura of someone who's a, a bit of a valetudinarian, a bit too fond of themselves, a bit too soft themselves as someone said to me years ago about the, one of the envoys in Northern Peace talks, how can he find time for the gym and the peace process at the same time? But above all, I think the really serious thing is the policy issue, uh, a policy issue of the public sector. I mean, last week he made two speeches in the middle of the, of the heave and he sucked up to the public sector on, bo- on both. And what was really hypocritical, I thought, of John McGuinness, who made such a fuss about Brian Lenehan's alleged canvassy the backbenchers, that John McGuinness has made public sector reform his main plank. But now that now he goes out and backs Martin, the very man who won't perform, perform the public sector at all, John McGuinness is a hypocrite, a political hypocrite, not to back Brian Lennon, the man who levied the public sector, Brian Lennon did. The bottom line is that Martin has had a charm life for a few the last few years, and it shows, political charm life. And by contrast, Lennon has been in combat nonstop, and it shows. And, like, that's the, the experience side. Now, go to the gladiator side. Modern leaders live in an arena of broadcasting and uh, television and radio. And if you put these two men side by side, Lennon is just far ahead. I mean, just mentally have an image of Michal Martin with that kind of very light presence he has. The hangdog kind of look. He seems to have internalized the recession into himself. His head is down. He's physically light. He hasn't got the moral authority in present. Now, compare with that the steely image that we saw from Lenehan uh, on Sean O'Rourke at the weekend. It was a towering performance. Hard, steely, tough. That's the man you want looking at Enda Kenny for the next five years. Uh, I have no time for these Dublin deputies for their stupidity in not looking at the simple image question here. It's like, it reminds me of the British Labour Party um, picking Ed Miliband because he was a great party man. Do Chris Andrews and his friends ever think for a second what the people of Dublin would want? Do you think the people of Dublin like a year from now have to choose between Michael Martin and Brian Lennon? Do you think they wouldn't go for Lennon multiplied by a million? Lennon has the kind of class act, the classy pol- political image. He has power, his voice has resonance. He looks like a t-shirt. And these guys, these guys in Fianna Fáil, who by the way are all going to lose their seats as far as I can see. They're about to pick a leader 
who will be as disastrous as Cowan was. And the other thing about it, it's another media pick as well. It's been run by the Irish Independent again. The Irish Independent went mad for Brian Cowan. All oh, though they couldn't get enough of him. And now they want they couldn't dump him fast enough. Now they want to put Martin in. If they do, mark my words, they'll be trying to get rid of him in six months. You don't you don't want a kind of a, a party man. Like all Martin has done so far, this is a totally fake momentum. It's based upon him sort of uh, kind of half standing up for, uh, for against Cohen. He didn't. He came on the air and I listened to him again and again. He said things like, uh, people have come to me and they've asked me to stand against Brian Cohen. He didn't call, say, I want this job. I'm able to do this job. I could do this job like Brian Lennon did. Brian Lennon walked in to a banking hall yesterday. That was, I thought, an incredibly tough ideological statement because he owned the banks. We own the banks now. He slipped up the banking hall and again it was a tour de force. Okay. Again he looked like a T-shirt. My he, has, he has that physical, moral presence, the voice and the body that you need in a modern political leader in a, in a, gladiator, in a gladiatorial arena like television. He, the leader of Fianna Fáil would be living for the next five years in television, either in a Rock This Report or in your programme or in an RTE. And if you put Brian Lennon and Michal Martin into the same studio head to head, there would be no okay. contest. There's a few things arising out of that. I want to start briefly, just with Michal Martin. Could it be that sometimes leadership confers particular qualities upon people that haven't been apparent previously in the way that it did, for example, for John Bruton and in the way that many people who look like they would be good leaders, as some perceived that Brian Cowan would be, turned out not to be? Because we had, we had Michal Martin two years ago in a Lisbon Treaty referendum debate and he went up against Declan Ganley and he was very, very strong and very forceful in putting his points to Declan Gandhi in that debate and he was very strong throughout the entire second Lisbon Treaty debate. Was that not a sign that the man has it? Well, he was able to do it in that because I regard that as a kind of anorak debate he'd be very good at. I could do that myself. I could gen myself up for that. I'm talking about standing on your feet and thinking on your feet in the Doyle and Leader's Question time when you want to put the boot in. By the way, it's the reverse thing with Martin. John Bruton never had the media behind him. John Bruton grew into the job when he was there. You could see all, all his powers. With Martin, he's been canonised by the media. He's been pushed out as, as the perfect candidate. Whereas he just couldn't compare with Brian Lennon for being able to think on his feet. And furthermore, I think that the, the other thing about him that I, I think is that he, he sort of he just never has had blood on his shirt the way Lennon did I, you know that phrase blood on his shirt is vital he doesn't have the scars and I think that Fianna Fáil will be deeply sorry that they put him in as leader because again they're being rushed into it by a sort of a media rantan to rush him in quick it's a pity this debate couldn't go on for a few weeks because then the people of Dublin would have their say I cannot understand how Dublin deputy do not understand that Brian Lennon is the kind of person, certainly the middle class, working class people, actually do respond okay. to Brian Lennon in battle. Brian Lennon, last night Sean O'Rourke on the Week in Politics put it to him that he's a spoofer. And could it be that many people have come to regard Brian Lennon as something of a spoofer? A great man for taking the brief like barristers do and going out and making a convincing argument when he doesn't really know what's going on behind it. Because this, after all, no matter what he inherited, was still the minister who brought in the bank guarantee. This is the minister who put NAMA together, which has done a fantastic job in actually accelerating the, disrupted, the destruction of the banks, and was the minister for finance who negotiated on seriously bad terms the surrender of this country's economy to the IMF and EU. So what would you, why would Fianna Fáil make a man responsible for all of that? It's leader. They would. They, they, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't make him leader if, they were, if there were anoraks like that. But you see, when people use the word spoofer, it reminds me of these people who talk about the dial in a talking shop. What else could it be? It's not a military dictatorship. You can't have armed deputies actually shooting each other. It's spoofing is Eamon Dunphy's word for anybody who's very good at speaking that he doesn't like what they're saying. Well, spoof Spoofing is the whole business of politics. Making, putting a decent spin on things. Giving people courage. Putting a gloss on what is horrible and allowing them to get through the day. What's the spoofing? There's a debate about NAMA. There's, a, there's two sides to the NAMA debate. The IMF were going to come in as far back as 2007. The IMF were on their way in here anyway. Brian, Her Brian, Cohen, or sorry, Brian Lennon inherited the recession. He didn't create the recession. In fact, he was far further back from it than Michal Martin was. He inherited it, but he coped it very well. And we actually do need somebody to quote spoof, unquote, i.e. talk brilliantly, talk the 
the way Churchill talked, Churchill was a spoofer. But by God, he spoofed Britain to the victory. And Brian Lennon, when he's speaking in full flight, while you're listening to him, you forget the misery and the gloom and the doom. He energizes you and he lifts your spirit. Whereas Michal Martin actually makes me physically tired to look at him, the hangdog look. Fianna Fáil doesn't understand. These, these Dublin deputies like Chris Andrews, he's only been around a wet week. He doesn't understand what modern broadcasting needs in a leader. He hasn't a clue. If they put Michal Martin in, I predict, I guarantee you, to let the movement within a year. What about substance, though? Is it not about substance it's rather a, than appearance? Yeah, Brian, Lennon. Brian, Brian Cowan in this studio last Monday yeah. bemoaned the fact that people judged him on his style rather than his substance. I don't care about that. I'm not Brian Cowan. I'm not Brian Cowan's. Uh, I don't believe in anything Brian Cowan says. I have nothing like Terry Prone. I have nothing con- but contempt for people who have contempt uh, for, for image. Every, every, all political life is about image. Back in the time of the Greeks, a leader had to look good, he had to speak well, and he had to be brave in battle. Brian Cowan even sick looks better than Michal Martin in his full health. Thank you very much, Senator Owen Harris of the Sunday Independent.